Melissa Armo is from the Stock Swoosh LLC, an educational firm that empowers traders with a complete, detailed system to become profitable traders. Melissa graduated magna cum laude from Gettysburg College with a BA in philosophy and a minor in Latin and political science in 1994. She was employed for by several banks and brokers in Pennsylvania, Florida, Arizona, and New York as a mortgage broker for 17 years. She changed careers uh, from banking to pursue a security trading uh, career in 2008. A self-taught day trader with over 10 years of experience, Melissa's specialty is trading strategy <coughs> that focuses on shorting stocks that gap up. Melissa also appears frequently on TV as the stock market expert. Watch Melissa on RT America, Cheddar TV, CBS, Fox News, and Fox Business Network. And before we get started, um, just let me hand out the prizes from the last session. I'll only take a second. And the prize for today goes to, uh, let's see. Mm -hmm. Okay, we haven't got a prize yet uh, set up, but so we'll get that at the end of the session today. So, Melissa, uh, where are you broadcasting from today? I live in New York City. It's a beautiful 80 degrees, gorgeous day here along Central Park. Perfect oh, look. It's miserable here, so be happy <laughs> where you are. Well, okay. we enjoy the nice weather until the winter starts here, so... <laughs> Well, uh, you know the drill. You have until five minutes before the hour. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and mute myself, and you have the floor. Wonderful. Thanks so much for having me. Welcome, everyone. I can see, I think that I can see the chats um, where every, I see the webinar chat. If anybody has any questions, you can just chat me as we're going along. Um, so I want to make sure that I have this correct. Yes, I have the chat set up. So I prefer to answer questions as we're going along. I will check and see the chats. Welcome, everyone. If you have any questions, you can always email me at melissa at thestockswish.com. Today, we're going to talk about trading momentum in gaps. As John said, I appear on TV, and I'm actually going to be on TV Friday morning discussing the unemployment number. Of course, we have the unemployment number Friday. Market seemed actually almost dead today. Um, it's, I almost was wondering if it was like a holiday or something, but the market is probably going to have some type of volatility and movement on Friday. And then next Wednesday, of course, we have the FOMC meeting and the rate decision. Uh, no one's expecting them to change rates, but the, the important thing about the next week is that we're going to know some more about what the Fed is thinking going into the latter part of 2024. So, I do talk on TV about the stock market. I also talk on TV about the economy. And again, the economy does not always go hand in hand with the overall stock market. So that's some, something important to note as well. If you have questions, you can email me at melissaatthestockswish.com. You can call me at 929-3200-GAP. You can also follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. I put a lot of videos on Skype, sometimes the trading room, stocks that I'm looking at watching, lessons. So it's good to go there. And again, if you have any questions, you can email me as well. So we're getting into really the latter part, the second part of 2024. And it's really interesting because it's a good time. We just had the Memorial Day holiday, but it's really a good time to look at where you are for the year. Figure out if you're meeting your goals for the year. And if you're not, how can you change it up so that you can achieve your financial goals between now and the end of the year? This is whether you're trading or not, you know, and specifically if you are trading, if you're behind on your goals for the year, how are you going to catch up? You still have plenty of time to catch up. And it's just June 4th. It's the beginning of June. So we have seven months left in the year. But the fact is you got to get a plan of action to do that for yourself. And you need a plan of action to achieve your monetary goals because that's extremely important. So I put the stats in here for our year to date results for the live trading room. 468, 247 for the year. This is for an average risk of $3,000 per trade. These are all trades on margin. I run a live trading room. I call my trades live. I call the entry, the exit, the stop, all in the room. They are day trades, what I call day trades. They're margin trades. These are not options trades. I do trade options as well. We're going to talk about some options today. 
I risk more for my options. One of the reasons I was risking more is because I was doing trades like NVIDIA. Now, NVIDIA stock splits next week on Monday. So actually, the cost of the positions we've been doing is going to decrease a lot. And a lot more people are probably going to start buying NVIDIA calls and puts. But I had been risking an average of $8,000, give or take, per trade in my options because I wanted to do more expensive ones. I wanted to hold overnight. So again, very good start to the year for 2024. But this is a newsletter. This is not a trading room. This is a newsletter where you would receive the newsletter to you emailed in live time. I'm buying the call and selling it. I'm buying the put and selling it. I'm trading options based on momentum, which we're going to talk about a little bit today as well. So again, like I was saying, if you have a plan to achieve your goals, you can get there. For me, it always was about getting the fast trade, the quick, quick trade, the quick money. So I started focusing very early on when I started trading, which was a long time ago now, 16 years ago. I started doing shorts. I prefer to short. Again, I will go long. Actually, we're long the video. We're in the video pause. But I prefer to short because stocks fall way faster than they ever rally, okay? So summer is really a good time to trade gaps. Why? Because you don't want to sit for six and a half hours all day. I just got done saying the market went nowhere this afternoon. So really in the summer, you tend to have the market drift off in the afternoon. And no one wants to sit at their desk for six and a half hours a day or eight hours a day if you're in an office when the weather, like I said, is 80 degrees. You want to get out. You want to make as much money as you can as early in the morning. And I trade in the first hour of the day. You know, I always say to people, <laughs> would you like to make $1,000 in five minutes or $1,000 in six hours? Well, of course, you'd, you'd say five minutes. You know what I mean? So what I found in all the years that I've traded is stocks make 80% of the move or thereabouts in the first hour of the day. So it while sometimes things can continue in the afternoon, most of the moves, most of the big moves happen in that first open period, okay? So if you're thinking about trading, if you wanna do this, if you're looking for a strategy, you have to kind of ask yourself and do a self-evaluation. Do you wanna trade the market, but you don't have a lot of time to devote to trading every day? If you don't, my strategy might be something you're interested in, specifically because I'm focused on that 30 minute, 60 minute morning period. Again, whether you want to trade or not, that's a decision that you have to come out with. But maybe, why? Maybe you need extra money coming in. Maybe you need to cover the cost of inflation. Maybe you are retired and you don't need a full-time job, but you would like to have more money coming in each month. You might want to look into, again, day trading. That's what we're going to talk about today. And if you are someone that's trading and you've been trading for a while and you have kind of, you know, some experience, mid-level experience, but you don't know what to do every day, you don't have a way to pick the best stock to trade each day, you may need a method and a strategy that will help you pick the stock that's going to move and then obviously have a move to pay you. So again, do you want to trade the market, but you don't know where to start? Many people decide they want to trade, they want to do this, but they have no idea what to do. And again, lots and lots of people get up, decide they want to do this, and that are all over the place when they first start. They're doing Forex, they're doing Bitcoin, they're doing options. They don't really know where to go and what to do next. When I started, like I said, I started trading gaps, but I also really got hooked with the short side of things. Again, the short side of things allowed me to make money faster. And I also found that I had a niche shorting because many people that day trade the market, that trade the market, don't understand how to short and really don't um, aggressively short, when I say aggressively. I mean, sometimes we're in trades, like I said, in the first 5, 10, 15 minutes of the day, okay? And again, any questions here, you can pop it in the room and then I will see them. I'm just going to put a test to make sure that that's right. Everybody can see my high. So anyways, let's get to it. Why would you come to me? You will come to me if you want to learn, okay? I, I was talking about this the other day when I was talking on television, because we were talking about trading, we were talking about the overall market. Learning is extremely important, really, in any profession. I'm not sure why people decide they want to make money in the stock market and think they're going to be able to do it without knowing anything. That's just totally, totally unrealistic. That is a very gambler-like mentality, okay? 
learning is extremely important, just like you have any other career, any other job, any other profession in the world. Trading really is no different. I don't know why people think they can make money in the stock market without learning what to do first. I really don't. That makes zero sense when you think about it. Again, common sense rules the day and should always rule the day with your trading. It, like, for example, if you want to be a doctor, you go to medical school. If you want to be an accountant, you go to undergraduate school and you get licensed, then you become a CPA. If you're a nurse, you go to nursing school. I have a friend in New York City, she's a retired nurse. She went to school, she worked for a number of years, retired early. If you want to become an electrician or a plumber, you go to train school. My grandfather was a plumber who was in the union. And that's how you learn how to fix things. You got to go to school to learn what to do, okay? Learning is extremely important in trading. It's as important as any other career. And I think that gets lost with people. It gets lost. They don't understand it. And then people wonder why they're not successful. And it's really no great mystery because they don't know what to do. They don't know what stocks to trade. They don't know how to read the overall market. And they don't know what direction to take a trade. Okay. Because again, you can go long or you can short. Now, again, I prefer to short. But I mean, the reality is we do sometimes do both. Like I said, we are we are long the video right now. So if this sounds like you, maybe you want to do this, you first have to decide if you want to trade. Again, I'm a very analytical person. First, you say, well, do I even want to do this in the first place? That's not a decision that I can make for you. You have to make that decision. You say, well, I think this is interesting. Maybe it's something that I can do. That's your call. Then you have to ask yourself, how much time do you have to devote to trading each day and week? You know, again, the reason I'm able to do a webinar like today or even teach classes on the side is because I'm done trading in the morning. Okay, I have the time to do it. Then you need to ask yourself if you're willing to invest the time and money to learning how to do it so you can be where you want to be financially in the near future. You know, you start trading now. You start a new strategy now. We're at the beginning of the summer. It's just the start of summer. It was Memorial Day a week ago. You've got June, July, August to get up to speed before the busy fall trading season starts and you're on your way. Again, it's the good time of the year, specifically when you're almost at this midway point of the year to kind of take stock where you're at, what you want to do, where you're at with your trading, where you're at with your finances, and where you want to go from here. So again, you have to find a strategy that meets your needs. For me, it's GAP. So what is a GAP? A GAP is the difference between the close and the open. Stocks GAP most every single day. I was just talking about NVIDIA. NVIDIA gapped up today. NVIDIA was a bullish GAP, Okay. So not every gap is what I call a good gap or what I call a golden gap. This is what I termed my system. What, a, what is a golden gap? It's a gap that's predictable, meaning I can predict the direction that the stock's going to go after I see the gap. So I'm not predicting the gap itself, okay? I'm Stitch Fix, for example, has earnings tonight. It's probably going to gap. We're not in it. It's super cheap. I don't know if we're going to do it. But anyways, that is a stock that could gap tonight. I don't know if it's going to gap up or down. I'm not predicting that gap itself. I'm waiting till I see the gap. And then I use a rating system to determine if I want to go long or short stitch fix, for example, which would be tomorrow. Okay. And again, there's other, other earnings out tonight, but that's one of them. Anyways, I'm looking for gaps that are predictable. And I want to see it before the open. Now, how do I do that? Like I said, I have a rating system. And this is a process that I go through that's a checklist that I prep myself and figure it all out in the morning into the pre-market period. Now, this was one, and I'm just going to show you what this looks like here. This is a daily chart of Microsoft. Okay, move this over. So this is back last week. So what is a gap? A gap is a difference between the close and the open. Stock closed here, gap down, open dropped. So you could have shorted Microsoft here. You could have bought a put. Now, again, we were talking about momentum. This is a great example of momentum. What? To the downside. It's also a gap. Okay, stock uh, open here in the morning at 9.30 when the stock market closed at a lower price than it closed the day before. So this was here around 429 and change, boom, open in the morning around 424 and change, open, fell. So this is a big fat bar. Even for a stock like Microsoft, it was $10 thereabouts. 
and you could have made money shorting it, okay? And again, any questions, plop it in the room. Hopefully I can see the questions here. I don't know if I can or not, but I don't see any questions yet. So I'm not sure if I have it up right. <laughs> um, if not, I'll just keep talking. Um, anyways, this is momentum where you'd want to short, okay? So getting back to what I was saying, you want to work smarter, not harder, because if you're trying to make money in the market on a consistent basis, and you're always, always waiting until after the open, 9.30, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, to try to figure out what to do, you're not going to be prepped. You're not going to be prepared. You're going to be all over the place. And then obviously you'll be trading much, much later in the day. Again, for me, I like to know what I'm doing in the pre-market. If I can figure out what I'm doing in the pre-market and I know that ahead of time, then I can be out of the trade a lot faster. Okay, you can't take a trade right out of the gate if you don't even know what you're doing, you know? And again, I'm looking for stocks that don't need the market, that don't have anything to do with the market whatsoever at all. So let's look at another daily chart here. This is shop. Okay, so here's this. So again, what is a gap? So this is a daily chart. This is shop. Stock closed here, gap down. Stock closed up here around 77 and change at four o'clock. Gapped down, open here in the morning, around 63 and change. And what did it do? It fell. You could have shorted it here. You could have bought a put, which we did. And it fell. Boom, boom, boom. Again, this is several days of falling. But that is momentum to the downside. So again, you can buy a put, which is what we did. So I'm going to show you in a minute or you could short this as a day trade. So what did we do? I decided to do puts. So at 1013, this is a newsletter. This is the options newsletter I sent out. We bought the $60 puts in shop with an expiration date of the 17th. I always do the weekly expirations for options. The Fridays, it was a put. Now, how much did this cost? I thought this was pretty cheap, A dollar five. Again, I'm risking more. I'll show you beginner risk in a minute. Eight 80 contracts is essentially like doing 8,000 shares. Risk was 8,400, sold at two, which is 95 cents, which is almost 100%. Profit, 7,600. Return on investment was 90%. And again, if you wanted to risk less, okay, you could even risk less than this. You could have risked 500 some dollars. 10 contracts, you would have spent 1050, profit 950. And again, this is a good trade. So again, if you don't want to pay the margin price for the to short it, again, which you could have done both, then you can buy the put because all you're risking then and you don't need a margin account to do options is the cost. Uh, question here, how do I predict whether after a gap the stock price will go up or down? That is a rating system that I use that I teach in my class, Ash. It's a 14 hour class, which I'll talk about at the end. That's the meat and potatoes though of what I do. And that's how I figure it out. I look at 26 points, that's a lot, but that's how I get the level of accuracy. I'm trying to get 20 points or more. I feel like if I get 20 points or more, I can take it in the direction of the gap. And again, the higher the rating, the better the gap. You can hold it for a bigger target. You can take more, you can do it as a put in a day trade, but again, that is what I teach in the class, and it's a 14-hour class. That's how I'm figuring it out, and that is a checklist which I go through each and every morning. Um, someone's asking me two questions here. Curious what the primary determinant is in your gap rating system. There isn't any primary deterrent. There's 26 points. They're all equal. There's no hierarchy. I'm just trying to get 20 or more. Uh, does it have to do with the first bar direction? No. You're rating the gap. In the morning, I could get up at 6 a.m. and rate the gap. Like I told you, some things are going to gap tonight. You could rate them at night tonight if you want. I'll still double, triple check them in the morning, but I usually wait to the morning. But it has nothing to do with the open because, again, I'm seeing the gap way before. Too late to do it after the open. I don't have enough time. Wouldn't, wouldn't be able to do it. I uh, also have a calculated my payoff ratio. Uh, I don't know what you mean by payoff as far as average return 
on investment. Is that what you mean? Or are you talking about win ratio? Again, the stats are at the beginning of the lecture here, but as far as my win ratio, it's pretty much about 70 to 75% between the room and the newsletter. You can go back and look at the stats on any given week or month. So as far as with me, if you're going to take 10 trades with me, figure seven are going to win and three are going to lose. I don't know if that answers your question. And now I see the questions. I didn't see them before, but now I do. Let's look at another option. Uh, we did the Disney puts. Again, what is a gap? Stock closed here, gapped down. Stock closed up here around 117 and change at four o'clock Eastern time. Open in the morning here, 107 and change, gap down. Open fell, okay? So again, we did puts. We also shorted this as a day trade. So this was a really good gap and we actually did both. So I wanna show you here, we did this out. This was the 102 puts that I called in the seven. I just wanna go back. This fell here, do 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 ba do ba do ba do but this took a while to go. So this, the exit on this was the 15th. So again, we did this, let me go back here. Time of the day was five, seven in the pre-market. I sent this trade. Again, this was one that I saw it was going to go to a much, much larger target. You had to wait a little bit. Technically, you could have got out of here with some profit, but it, this was the this was really the money. This was really the momentum you wanted in here when it broke and came all the way down and broke 101 and actually almost broke 100. It came all the way down and didn't quite do it. So again, if you're someone that wants to do options, this is still the same philosophy. It's still the same concept, still the rating system, still you're doing it. These were so, so cheap, dirt cheap, because I did them so far away from the strike. The cost was 40 cents. Again, I whopped it on. Great trade. Again, 150% ROI on this. You had to wait, you know, about a week or so. And again, if you took 30 contracts with 1,200, you could have made, oh no, this isn't right. You would have made more than, more than 720 with a risk of 1,200. You would have raised 60 times, you would have made $1,800. This isn't right. You would have made $1,800 on this, risking 1,200. This is taking it here and exiting it there. Again, I'm risking a, an advanced trader risk, but I'm trying to show beginner risk. And when I say beginner risk, I'm using an average of a thousand per trade you certainly could do one contract. Something like that costs 40 cents though, that would only be 40 bucks. <laughs> so, I mean, even if you wanted to do 10 contracts, I would say to do 10 contracts with something like that. And again, you would have made $600, you know? So you would have had to wait a couple of days, take the trade here, it pushed back, trade was down, boom, till it went. Any other questions about options while we're talking about them here? Okay, let's keep going. We're talking about risk to reward. What is a good risk to reward when you're doing a day trade? If you're risking $3,000, you're looking to make $3,000. And I'm talking about trades on margin. We're in and out. We short it, say we get in right into the open drops 10, 15 minutes, we're out. I'm trying to flip it over one, okay? Always flat before the end of the day by four o'clock. What about if I'm doing an option? I think 50% is good in an option, particularly right now in this market. It's not earning season. We're at the end of earning season. And we also have a market that's in a very tight range and can't make up its mind if it wants to make new highs or not. So I think between 50 and 100% is good for an option right now. Now, again, what I was talking about in the video, we had some really big trades in NVIDIA because we went long calls. We did calls in NVIDIA that ended up having some crazy return on investments because I called strikes that were really, really, really far out. They went there, but they were expensive to do. Again, if you are someone that's going to do options, you don't need a margin account, but you still have to set your risk. So for example, say you have $10,000 in, in, in an options account at a retail broker, 
you you shouldn't be doing a NVIDIA that costs $2,500. You'd be risking 25% of your account. That's too great, okay? Now, if you've got 20, 20 grand, I think that's okay. Or more than that, 25, you could do one contract. But the whole idea is we're trying to get trades, all of my trades to 100%, but sometimes we don't. Why? Again, sometimes things don't go as fast as we want them to go. Sometimes I'll call a trade in a Monday. Again, that Disney was a good example. I call it on the day that it gaps. It doesn't go. Then it takes another day. Then it doesn't go. And it's still there. And it could be a little bit up, a little bit down, could be flat, could be down. And then finally, poo, then it goes. And it could be two days before the expiration, could be the day before the expiration, could be the last day of the expiration. Again, with options, you're trying to get the momentum as fast as you can, okay? Because you lose time value every day. So it's nine times out of 10, if I do something and it goes super duper big out of the gate, obviously that's the best case scenario, that's great. We did do Disney puts at higher strikes. I don't have that one in here for that May 7th. It, but the lower strike one, the 102, took a couple of days to go. So again, did I think that I was going to get 150% on that? I didn't know by that point. It took so many days to go, but because it ended up selling off like a hot cake and going really fast, we ended up doing really well in that trade. But if you killed it before it went, you didn't get the profit, you didn't get the money, and you actually lost in the trade. And like I was talking to you about saying that about learning, this is really what helps you. I'm just going to go back to this Disney chart here a minute. Uh, what helps you hold through a trade when you're risking money? And I, I know it was 40 cents, but if your risk was the same as on your trade, it's still a trade where you're like, oh my God, this could lose. I'm down. Why isn't it going? The market's new at new highs. The fact is, if you believe in the trade and if you understand the system, if you rated the gap, which was 5.7, then you will hold through the trade. You will have conviction. Again, if the trade loses, it loses. I told you, you're going to lose three out of 10 on average. But if you believe in it and you hold it and you have plenty of time left to go, you can get it. Boom. And actually, this wasn't even the last day, but it was it was cutting it close. It was cutting it close there. Anyways, with options, I think 50% is good, but we're trying to get 100. We try. I mean, what can I say? It's one of these things where you have to play it out. You have to see what's going on. You have to see how fast it moves. You have to watch the market. What is the other reason to trade gaps? Fast profits. Again, you could have scalped the Disney right away out of the gate. To me, I didn't think it was a big enough risk to reward to get out of that right there on that particular day for the lower strike that we did. But when I'm doing my day trades, I'm trying to get in and out fast. And we did do a day trade in Disney that worked. And we were in and out of that very quickly. The other reason I like to trade gaps is because it helps me focus on one thing. One thing where I don't need the market. Again, today's a great example because if you were looking for the market's help today to the downside or the upside, it really went nowhere. And again, we could go nowhere Wednesday and we could go nowhere Thursday and the market may not move until Friday when the unemployment number comes out. I hope to God the market moves somewhere this week, but the market may not go anywhere outside of the range up or down until next Wednesday when the FOMC meeting happens. So what are you going to do? Not do any trades for the next five days? I mean... You, if you're trading and you're active and you show up every morning and you're looking for the gaps and rating them, you got to try to find something to do, even on a slow period, even if it's a slow period, three to four days out of five in a week. And again, another reason to trade gaps is it helps you find momentum. So we've been doing the NVIDIA. I don't, I don't have that in here, I don't think. Um, we've been doing the NVIDIA because obviously it was getting bought. It had huge, huge moves up. And again, one of the nice things about NVIDIA was we were in it and the stock followed through overnight in the gap. And I'm just going to just, you know, make up a scenario here. So, for example, say you buy a put, OK, say you buy a put at $60 and you buy the I mean, you buy the $60 strike and a put on the Monday, Tuesday, you get up in the morning and then the stock and again, you have the $60 strike. The stock is gapping down. It's a 57. Well, as soon as you get up in the morning, your $3 in the money, you get out. You get out like that. That momentum could happen overnight while you're in the trade, or it can happen on the live day where it falls and it drops like the Disney, okay? 
So we don't know how that's going to set up. Obviously, it's great when it happens the second we do it. But sometimes the biggest moves happen overnight in stocks. And the reason doing options is very profitable like that is because you have a fixed risk where if you're risking $1,000 or $2,000 or eight grand, whatever you're risking, you can't lose more than that if the trade goes upside down against you because it's a fixed risk, unlike if you're in a swing trade, which again, a lot of people got whomped last week. People were long the market. Uh, people were long stocks like NVIDIA, for example, and we had that sell-off. Remember, we had that sell-off after the Memorial Day, Thursday into Friday, and people were long. People were long and they got whopped. And again, people were in swing trades, okay? So again, what's another reason to trade gaps? The moves happen fast, you know, most of the time. Again, sometimes they take a little bit to go. We did some Disney, so that did go right away, but I was just having here the lower strike, that 102. And that was just such a good trade. Why? Because it was really, really cheap. It was stupid cheap, actually. And it ended up being a huge trade. To see that it would go to that number within the time since the day of the gap on the 7th was really was really the rating. I mean, it was just a, really that the system itself that told me that it had the capability to drop $4 plus within a week, week and a half. And, and again, that's where you can really get some of those really nice moving trades or big trades. Anyways, let's talk about some day trades here. So this was the last full week. I was off last week for the holiday. I closed the room for the Memorial Day week. Market was closed on Monday. So the week before was the last full week we had. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. No trades. I closed the room. Then we had the holiday. So this is one week of trades. I'm going to go over it. These are day trades. These are all trades on margin. My average risk in my day trades, like I said earlier, is about $3,000 per trade. You can risk less. You can risk more. These are day trades that call in the room. Now, we did Google. So 520 was Google here. Again, entry was 177.60. This, again, is something you would have to have a margin account. You would have to have a margin account to do this, okay? So if you don't know what a margin account is, you got to Google it. you got to find a broker where you can get the leverage to do that. Risk was 3,200. Exit was 178.40. Tried to pull a dollar out of it. Again, a dollar or more is a move. Profit was 3,200. This was a good trade. So again, this is the Google here. Stock closed here, gapped up, rallied. Then closed here, gapped up again, rallied again. Boom. Again, this was a long. So I just want to show you here, we did do one long that day. Then the 21st, we did AMD. AMD got down today. AMD actually fell today. I don't know if anybody looked at this AMD. I don't know where it's closing right now or where it closed at four. AMD was around 158 and change here today. This is a similar sector as NVIDIA. So this is quite interesting, but this had a gap down today. May 21st, we shorted it. Entry was 164. Again, exit was 163.30. Again, try to pull a dollar out of it, got out before it bounced. This was on the 21st here. And again, this is really, really funny because this doesn't look like much of anything at all, but this has been on my radar, this AMD to short. Um, but we actually did a trade in here and got out of it. And it seems crazy because we shorted it and it was a little baby green bar. That's how it closed. But we made money shorting that. Again, it's the nimbleness of the entry that we take it. It's because I rated it and I knew it would fall. I knew it would fall. But again, things are taking longer right now. This is my two cents here. If you're doing options or if you're doing day trades, or if you're doing anything at all, you sort of like have to give things a, just a cushion, just a cushion. And if that means you back off your risk right now, then back it off. Because you've got to be patient right now with trades and give things a cushion. Because again, we're in the summer period. The market's like on edge, could explode, make new highs any second, or it could fall off a cliff. And I don't know what it's going to do. And I'm actually not in the market at all. I'm not in the QQQs right now. I'm not in the SPY right now. I'm not in the Dow, the Diamonds, which is ETF, which I haven't done that for a while. The market's strong. The market's bullish. Yes, that's true. But again, you either are scalping things right now or you've got to give stuff a chance to work. It's just the, just the nature of where we're at right now because everybody's on edge with what's going on with the Fed. May 22nd, we shorted Target. This was a really nice trade. We got a dollar out of it, shorted at 142.40, exited at 150.41.15, profit was 31.25. That was here. Stock close here, gap down, rallied. We shorted the tail and then we got out and then we were done. And then it actually went up. But anyways, we got it. We had a short in here. 
So the stock closed here around 156 and change, open in the morning around 140 something, rallying. We shorted it, got out, done, boom. Called it a day. Again, if I can flip my money around one in a day trade or close to one in five, 10, 15 minutes, I'm out. I'm out. Again, options are different. I will hold options to give them a chance to work, but I'm out of my day trades as fast as I can. May 23rd, we did the Disney. So this was the Disney day. Um, again, really nice move here. Stock close here, gap down, open, dropped. So this was Disney right in here. Beautiful sell-off. Again, we're looking for momentum. We're looking for a fat red bar. If you're shorting, how are you going to make money? It's got to drop. The only way you're going to make money shorting if this price drops. Again, we're long NVIDIA right now. The only way I'm going to make money is if the stock moves up. Okay. So again, whether you're long or short, you've got to get the momentum in your favor. You've got to get the direction right. And again, you have to get as good of entry as you possibly, possibly can, which is why I'm trying to get organized in the pre-market in the morning. And then we didn't do any trades on Friday. I closed the room for the Memorial Day weekend. So these were, this was a good solid week going into the holiday. And again, last week we were closed. So we'll see what happens this week. Like I said, it's a week to be careful. You don't want to blow up on a week that's slow. You want to be careful and pick your trades. And that's why focusing on gaps and following the rating system really helps me focus on what to do. You know, again, say you were doing something like a sport. You're not going to become a professional golfer, tennis player, baseball player, basketball. You're going to focus on one thing. You're going to become a really good basketball player. Or you're going to become a really good golfer. Or you're going to become really good at tennis. You're not, you're not going to become great at everything. You're not going to be in the Olympics in every sport. Okay. So you, you kind of have to think of it like that. You got to hone it down and think about what you're doing why you're doing it and try to get really, really good at one thing. Any questions here? As I'm talking along here. We're doing good with time. Well, um, I was gonna say something else we were talking about this summer. I forget. Well, the earnings season, I know I was going to say, earnings season, the next earnings season starts after July 4th, okay? When the next earnings season, we're at the end of earnings season. So we do have some earnings out this week, okay? Some at night, some in the morning. But not as many as we have an earnings season, which starts in July after July 4th holiday. Then we get like 200 earnings a day. Now, again, that doesn't mean I'm doing 200 trades a day. But I'm definitely more active in that six to eight week period when earnings season kicks off with your four quarterly earnings seasons a year than I am at the end of earnings season, okay? So I'm, I'm trying to do one day trade a day, but I might do five options or 10 options even a day if I have that many to do. It's, it's, it's easier to do multiple options at once. But again, you know, sometimes I'm doing things with the market. Sometimes I'm doing all the sector together or whatever the case may be. We're doing the airlines or we're doing the banks or the financials. Anyways, you need a foundation. You need a foundation for why you're taking the trade, why you're going in a set direction, why are you doing it? So again, you need a foundation to trade. You need an infrastructure for every entry and it is the strategy itself. And again, for me, it's the gap. The strategy is a core reason behind why you're even watching that stock in the first place or even contemplating an entry or trade in it. Many times I talk to people and I say, what is, if they're interested in the class, they call me, they talk to me, they, I say, what are you doing? What do you, they say, I'm trading. I, and I say, what are you doing? And they describe something to me that is an entry. It is not a strategy. So I say, but that's how you're entering it. You're buying it on this moving average or whatever. But what's the strategy? And then very oftentimes people can't answer that question because there really isn't any strategy. It's just an entry. And entering a stock should not be taken unless the trade has a foundation supporting it. Again, this is common sense. This is common sense, but it's something that's a piece of the puzzle that many, many traders miss because they think they're doing an entry and they're doing that right, they say, but then the trade loses more than it ever works. And they say, well, why? Why did I did it right? I did it here. I did it there. Because you shouldn't have done that stock on that day. You shouldn't have taken that entry because the foundation was lacking. And again, I'm only ever trading gaps. So I'm only shorting bearish gaps and I'm only going long bullish gaps. 
but I'm only also doing that if it rains per my 26 point system, because you can't buy every gap up and you can't short every gap down. Otherwise it would be easy to figure this out and trade just like you can't do gap bills all the time in every single thing you do either. I mean, that would be easy to figure out then, right? And it doesn't work on a consistent basis. So it's the consistency that many people lack because they don't have a foundation for why are they taking this train? Maybe you do have the entry right, but you don't have the pick. You don't have the pick right. You understand what I'm saying? Anyways, this is very important. Fact, many stocks on any given day have no strategy to trade as a day trade. That is why most stocks on any given day do not have a proper entry. There's no strategy. And many times stocks on any given day will go with the market. Today's another good example. The market went nowhere today. And if you needed the market for your trades today, you probably had a hard time or lost. So again, you, you want to do something where you don't need the market. Personally, I think NVIDIA is going to have one more run up before the stock splits on Monday. I think that doesn't matter what the market does. And I don't think that it's going to care. Now, NVIDIA could move the market. NVIDIA could move the market up. But the reality is I've tried to do things that have nothing to do with the market. So gaps are a strategy or foundation for your trades in the overall market and stocks, anything you do. When you choose to take a trade, there has to be a support system behind why you're taking the trade in the first place. Gaps are the support system or reason you would enter a position. You think it's going to fall. Why? This is the pre-work that you're doing in the pre-market. This is what the process I'm going through in the rating system when I'm looking at the daily chart. I'm saying... Okay, I think it's going to fall because one, two, three, four, five, six, and I go through my whole thing. Or I think it's not going to fall. Maybe I rate it and it rates 12 points. I say, oh my God, this is a piece of crap. I'm not going to short it. It's probably going to flip. I don't want to short this one or whatever the case may be. Okay. So the reason you're choosing to enter a stock or the foundation for your entry should be because the stock is a quality gap. It rates high. You're only taking entries in something that has a foundation to support the trade that you're taking in the entry. And again, I'm never entering the trades in the pre-market. You can't trade options in the pre-market or post-market. I'm not doing swing trades, okay, which is essentially on cash or you could be on two to one margin. When I'm doing options, I have a fixed risk. And when I'm doing the day trades, I'm on margin, but I'm flat every day before four o'clock. And many times I'm out of my trades by 10 a.m., 10.30, okay? So again, you can trade and open up a margin account at a retail broker with four to one, or you can go prop and you can get 10 to one. So there's many, many types of margin accounts out there for people to look into trading on margin. Or like I said, you open up an options account, open up a cash account on margin, and you just, I mean, on, on an options account that's not on margin as a cash account, and you can buy puts and sell them or buy calls and sell them. Any questions here so far? Uh, anyways, we were talking about share size. You've got to take your cash and say, this is how much I have. And again, I get in this conversation with people because they always want to risk more, 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 more. I get it. If you're someone that's losing money in the market, though, your main objective should not be to risk more. Your main objective is should be to learn how to do it and start consistently being green. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, like I showed you the last week, pulling a week together, saying, oh my God, I can do it. I just made this much money in a string of green days. Because all you have to do then is prove to yourself that you've got it down pat, or at least following me that you've got it down pat. And you understand the rating system, you learn it, and you can see it yourself. You see the entries I'm calling, and then you can whop on the size after you grow your account and after you prove to yourself that you can do it. I think people are taking far too much risk when they're trading and don't know what they're doing, trying to make it all back really quick because they've lost money or tried to do this. You're seeing that with these Reddit stocks. It was, it was so easy to predict that GME would fail. I was on TV like three weeks ago about that. Whenever that, ha whenever that first thing happened, it got halted like a million times that whole week. It was halted yesterday too. It was so, that was, again, I didn't trade it. I don't want to trade anything that's halting. You can't even trade that on margin. Brokers cut off all margin on that. That is so dangerous. You could get out one morning, that stock could be at zero. People are trading that. They're gambling. There's no strategy whatsoever at all. And it was very easy to see that that was going to fail. That rally that was created in that stock, and I'm talking about in the last month, was not made with institutional money. 
Therefore, it's not going to go anywhere up. It's not going to have the follow through. It's not like Apple. It's not like Navinia. And again, I get the price point is something like GME is cheaper, but there's plenty of stocks that you can trade that you can go long that are not, you know, $1,000 a share. And again, Navinia is going to split. Navinia is going to split. It's going to be a lot easier to trade a day trade and do options and a lot less expensive once that split happens. But it's the whole idea where you're taking the share size. If you short 1,000 shares and a stock drops a dollar, you make $1,000. If you short 2,000 shares and the stock drops a dollar, what do you make? $2,000. If your goal is to make $1,000 a day, then you have in your head, okay, well, this is on average. Now, can I afford to take this risk and trade? If not, you back it off, you build your account up, and then you go from there. So again, you have to figure out what your goals are. And then you look at your cash and you prove to yourself that you can do it and that you've got the strategy down pat. And a lot of that has to do with learning. So again, my system is called the Golden Gap System. It's one strategy. That's all you need to be successful in the market. You do not need a general overall broad base view to make money. Tons of people have that and fail all the time. It's interesting. I've been doing TV now for eight years going on nine. And there are people out there that on TV that talk about all kinds of topics and they're not experts. Whenever someone, uh, Whenever a network asks me to discuss something and I and do not consider myself an expert in it, I say, no, I, it's, I don't want to go out there on national television and pretend to be an expert in something that I don't know anything about. And you have people on TV doing that constantly. And it bugs me. It bugs the crap out of me. I see people. I'm like, this person has no idea what they're talking about. They Google the topic and spit something out. They're not an expert. I discuss on TV what I know, okay? You must trade every day in the market what you know. You're not going to be uh, an expert in everything. Just, just cut that out of your head, okay? You don't need to be. So that's the good thing. So it's not going to take 100 years to do this, and you don't have to do 100 classes. You do need to get good and become an expert in one thing if you really want to make this kind of money. If you really want to have the consistency of the winning trades, you know, again, 70% or more. And then some of these trades are really big winners. So you've got to get good at something. And if you're jumping all over the place from thing to thing to thing, you're never going to get good. Learn how to read institutional money and price patterns and gaps. And then you don't need to do anything else. Because if your reason for doing this is to make money, that's all you need to do. So like I have one goal. My goal is get up tomorrow, make money. I don't care if it's in an option. I don't care if it's in a day trade. Maybe it'll be both. That's it, okay? And again, I will go long and short, but I really do prefer to short. It's just, I think shorts go so much faster and I like to be done in the first half hour of the day. Again, it's summer, it's beautiful. It's in Central Park. I live along the park. I don't want to be inside in the summer. I will be inside in the winter when the weather is snowy and it's freezing. So now's the time of the year I want to enjoy my life. I want to enjoy living here in New York City and all the things that the city has to offer this time of the year, free concerts that they have in the park and all kinds of things. So it's, it's especially if you live in the Northeast, you know what I mean? You want to take advantage of this weather. So one of the benefits, one of the benefits of trading, number one, you be your own boss. Again, you can work a half an hour to an hour a day. You can take vacations when you want. Like I said, I took a vacation last week. It was a staycation. I stayed here and I enjoyed New York. And it has unlimited income potential. Again, start with what you have. If you have a $5,000 account, if you have a $10,000 account, if you have $2,000, you can open up an options account with $2,000. You have to take the money you have and grow it from there. All right. Otherwise, you're going to be gambling and trying to do things that don't make any sense. Your income is only determined by your experience and your risk amount, but you can build it. You can build on that. And again, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? set goals for yourself. It's like the, it's like this weight loss drug that everybody's on this weight loss drug, no Ozempic. Nobody knows what the long-term side effects of that are going to be. People are already having some side effects from that. People want to lose weight. I get that some people may have to take that drug because they're seriously overweight or they have health concerns with their, with their weight. But there are people now that are abusing that drug and taking it that don't even need it and don't have any health risks. And you don't know what's going to happen. People are living on it now. And again, everyone wants like yesterday, yesterday, yesterday. Everyone wants everything quick. The idea of learning and understanding what to do really makes sense. And that's where you're going to get the consistency and the longevity and the knowledge and all the things that you want to be able to do this into the future. And getting back to what I said at the beginning, every profession that you can earn a lot of money, every single one, you must go to school. 
it's no different than trading. And again, the only reason I can think that people think it's something different is because obviously they hear stories all the time, like you heard with the meme Reddit stocks that people actually made millions and millions of dollars, um, you know, by taking trades this and there. Again, most people lost in those Reddit stocks that did those trades. So the one guy made millions of dollars. So it's like, Again, that's more gambling, not something that you can say, I'm going to do this and I'm going to stick with it. And there's a strategy here and everything else. Leonard is agreeing with me. Any other questions here? Anyways, you have to want it. You have to want to do it. That's a decision that only you can make for yourself. I can help answer questions for you. But if you want to trade, that's a decision for yourself. If you do want to do it, you got to take the steps to be there and not talk about it and then never do anything with it and just play around with it and never get serious and then lose money and say, why am I doing this? And get frustrated. You don't have to get frustrated with yourself. You can say, hey, I really want to do this. I'm going to do the work. I'm going to take the bull by the horns and do it because you're not going to change your situation just sitting and listening around. You've got to want to do it. You've got to take steps. And again, time of the year is a good time of the year to do this because you still have seven more months left in the year where you can be where you want to be by the end of the year. So my class and my system is called the Golden Gap Rating System. It measures gaps by rating them in the daily chart to find stocks to trade that have, number one, a high probability of directional bias for the entire day, a big move on the day, early confirmation of my bias, and the move between 9.30 and 10. And again, precise entries with follow through and a good risk to reward potential, which obviously I'm trying to get in every trade if I can get it. But I'm using this system for day trades and options. You can use it for swing trades too. I'm just not because I'm doing the options. But how much you make is a function of how much you risk, okay? And my gap plays, I consider 50% to 100% a good risk to reward. You want to be consistent, though. You want to be consistent with your size. You're either risking 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, or whatever. You come up with your, it's the cash amount, not the quantity of shares, because it could vary. The difference between your entry and your stop could be small, could be big. So your share size quantity is going to vary depending on whatever trade we're doing. Obviously, a stop in something like shop is going to be different than stitch fix, you know, if we do that tomorrow. Anyways, what will you learn from me in my class? You will learn the 26-point professional bearish gap rating system. The purpose of this system is to help you evaluate which gap to trade each morning using the checklist. The checklist tells you what to trade, when, and in what direction. And the 26-point checklist predicts directional bias in a stop. That's the whole point. And that it's going to have a big move. Again, you want this to do this where it fits your schedule. And you have to think about if this is for you, you have to think about if you want to do it part-time or full-time, what will you learn in the class? You will learn the 26 points, the checklist I go through each and every morning to pick the best gap to trade each day. And again, I prefer to short. So my class is called the Golden Gap Course. It's a full two-day course on how to strategically find, pick, and play stocks at our professional bearish gaps. The class is online. You can be anywhere in the world and take it. Classes this weekend for June, which is June 8th and 9th. Class tuition is $69.99. Classes online. It could be anywhere in the world and take it. And then if you want to do two classes, I offer $500 off for the combo, which is the Golden Gap, which is Saturday and Sunday, and the Trends course, which is on Tuesday. And again, this class is online. Now, I'm doing a summer special going on through this Friday. If you want to do the class this week, if you want to sign up, you can sign up today and start trading with us tomorrow. This ends, though, on Friday the 7th. You will get the trading room free through the end of 2024 and the options newsletter free through the end of 2024 if you sign up for the Golden Gap course this weekend, which is $69.99. Again, summer package ends June 7th, and the class is online. 